So what we're going to make in this lab is this ethylene diamine cobalt 3 chloride. Specifically, what we're going to be making is the transform of this compound. So we're dividing this up over two weeks, and the first week will mostly we'll do most of the synthesis for the compound. The second week is the isolation of the compound. So in the first week, we're going to start out by adding approximately 20 mils of water to a sidearm flask. Now, that's approximately 25 mils of water. It doesn't have to be 25 mils of water exactly. You're wasting time if you try to measure out 25.00 mils. Approximately 25 mils of water. Deionized water. To that, you're going to add 8 grams of cobalt chloride hexahydrate, which is kind of a maroon colored solid. Now, this you're going to, for this, you will have to record the exact amount used. Okay, and it doesn't have to be 8 exactly. It could be 8.05. It could be 7.95. But you do have to record the exact amount used because you need to know that for your calculations. So you're going to want to record every digit that the balance gives you. So next, you will make a second solution by adding, again, approximately 25 mils of water to a 50 mil flask or beaker. And to this solution, you're going to add 3.3 mils of anhydrous ethylene diamine. Now, this also has to be measured exactly, as, as accurately as you can. And we're going to perform this step in a hood because not under one of the snorkel hoods and one of the main hoods because ethylene diamine is, is pretty nasty stuff. So you will then combine the two solutions. In other words, pour the second solution into the sidearm flask with the cobalt solution. And the flask is going to be fitted with rubber stopper with a rubber stopper and glass tubing, right? It's going, to look, it's going to look like this. So you've got your flask, you'll have a rubber stopper, glass tubing assembly, okay? The glass tubing should go almost to the bottom of the flask, but not quite. It shouldn't touch the bottom of the flask, but you want maybe eighth of an inch, no more than a quarter of an inch gap. So it should extend almost to the bottom of the flask, but not quite. So you're going to attach this to a vacuum line and we're going to draw air through the solution while it's heated on a hot plate for a period of 90 minutes. See, as you, as you, as we bubble air through the solution, the solution will have a tendency to evaporate and evaporation is a cooling process, so we're going to keep it hot on a hot plate and the reaction will go faster when it's hot. So what we're doing here is we're using, we're not really pulling a vacuum on it, but we're using the vacuum line to draw air through the solution, right? So you're going to attach this to the vacuum line, okay? Attach this to the vacuum line, that's going to pull air out of the flask and air is going to go into the flask through the glass tubing. But the bottom of the glass tubing is going to be immersed in your solution, so the air will have to bubble through the solution. Right, so what are we doing with this? We're using air to oxidize the solution. Specifically, we're oxidizing the cobalt. We're starting with a cobalt-2 salt, and we're finishing with a cobalt-3 salt. If you remember, Cobalt 2 is, is labile and cobalt 3 is inert. This, this is a typical synthetic procedure for cobalt compounds to start with a cobalt 2 salt and then oxidize it. So you'll add, if necessary, you can add water in 10 mil increments if the volume drops below the bottom of the glass tube. Because if that happens, it'll stop bubbling. So if necessary, you can add water, but you don't want to add too much water. So we'll keep, keep it to 10 mil increments. 
So at the end of your 90 minute period, after we've heated and bubbled air through it, drawn air through it for 90 minutes at least, transfer it to a 50 mil beaker, and you're gonna add 18 mils of 12 molar hydrochloric acid. You're gonna cover this with a watch glass and leave it in the hood, the one of the main hoods, until the next period. Now the only reason we're doing this is to give it give the solution time to evaporate. The reaction has already happened at this point. We're just giving the solution time to evaporate. If we had a longer period, you could simply heat, heat the solution down to a minimal volume and the compound would, would, would come out, would crystallize out. But also, by doing it slowly over a period of a week, you'll also get bigger crystals than if we simply heated it to reduce the volume. So anyway, leave it, transfer it to a beaker, cover it with a watch glass, and leave it in the hood until the next period. So when we come in next week, the following week, you should have some should have some fairly large emerald green crystals in the flask. Okay. So the first thing you're going to do, the first step is you're going to suction filter. Obviously to separate the crystals from the solution. All right. You're going to Transfer it to a mortar, a mortar and pestle, and you're going to grind it with approximately 20 mils of acetone. Approximately, it doesn't have to be an exact amount. If you need to wash out the mortar with additional acetone, you can. So, like I say, you'll suction filter it, and then you're going to wash it with additional acetone in one mil increments until it drips colorless. All right, until what's dripping out of the bottom of the funnel is colorless. So what we're doing with this step is the removal of any unoxidized cobalt too in the form of tetrachlorocobaltate. Right, we started with the cobalt two salt and we oxidized it. We most likely didn't get complete oxidation. When we added that 12 molar HCl, we have an excess of chloride. So any cobalt two, any cobalt two salt that's in there is going to be in the form of tetrachlorocobaltate, which is blue. Right, so when you first start adding your acetone will probably drip blue, blue-green in color, so you want to keep washing it until it drips colorless. And by washing it, you can simply use a disposable pipette and just squirt one mil at a time over the top of the solid until it drips colorless. And one more time, we're taking out the tetrachlorocobaltate. So then you'll return it to the mortar and we're going to do a second grinding, this time with, again, approximately 20 mils of methanol. Okay, so grind it up with 20 mils of methanol. Again, we'll suction filter it. And if you have to, you can wash the mortar with additional methanol to be sure you get all the compound out. It's not soluble in methanol. What we're doing with this step is we're taking out excess hydrochloric acid, which is soluble in methanol. The hydrochloric acid is soluble in methanol to an appreciable extent, but our compound is not. So we're taking out the hydrochloric acid. So you'll record your mass, turn in your product in the end of the period, put it in a sample vial, turn it in, and calculate your percent yield. So you're going to have to decide and calculating your, to calculate your percent yield, you need your theoretical yield. You're going to have to decide when you do that, which was the limiting reagent, the cobalt chloride hexahydrate or the ethylene diamine. Okay. And just a couple of final notes. This is what your compound, this is what it should look like roughly. This hasn't been washed with uh, methanol. So it still kind of has that uh, shiny um, crystalline-like appearance appearance, because it still has the HCl in the lattice. Once you wash it with the, um, 
with the math with the math and all, yours will look a little bit more of a. It won't look shiny like this. It'll be more of a dull green in color. But it's definitely going to be emerald green in color. And then the last thing, remember what we're making here is the transform of this compound. Okay. Now remember, remember we did build some models of some of these coordination compounds much earlier in the semester. Remember the ethylene diamine is N C C N. So this is one ethylene diamine. This is one ethylene diamine, right? So in the transform, the two ethylene diamines are opposite one another, right? And the two chlorides are opposite one another. What we're making here is the transform. This is easily converted into the cis form simply by dissolving it up in water and letting it evaporate and it will eventually convert to the cis form. But what we initially make here is the transform which is emerald green in color. And that should be everything that you need to do this experiment.